The countdown to Christmas is underway and some of the busiest shopping days are fast approaching. How is the Las Cruces business community preparing for holiday shopping? We'll find out in this edition of ASTA. Hello and welcome, I'm Udelvi Hill. Our guest is Debbie Moore, President and CEO of the Greater Las Cruces Chamber of Commerce. Debbie, thank you for joining us. You're welcome, my pleasure. And first of all, congratulations. You're the recipient of the Governor's New Mexico Distinguished Public Service Award. Thank Only you very Only one much. of 10 people in the entire state to get that recognition. For this year, it's its 50th year and I'm very humbled and honored. Well, well deserved. Congratulations thank you. to thank you, you on that. And also for being appointed to the State Workforce Board by Governor Michelle Lujan Griffin. That's another feather in your hat. Well, I don't know about a feather. I think it means more work. Work, More but, work. <laughs> but I'm very excited. You know, workforce is very um, it's a very passionate issue to me, and I think it, by being on the board, Tracy Bryan from the Bridge of Southern New Mexico is the chair, and of course uh, Secretary McCamley, I think we could take workforce up another notch and level and get people jobs. Great, and it's also having that presence from Southern New Mexico involved in that whole process. Yes, sir, that's very important. It certainly is. Okay, so moving on to holiday shopping. The traditional start of the Christmas shopping season is Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving. How big of a day is that for retailers, not just in Las Cruces, but elsewhere? Well, it's huge because a good percentage of their uh, gross gross income comes from those holiday shopping days and they count them off and they know how many is doing and if you've noticed they've already started their advertising for the holidays early because actually if you look at the calendar they lose a few days because of the lateness of Thanksgiving so they've already started a lot of them but for the small local business it's very key that we continue shopping not only on Black Friday but of course on Small Business Saturday which is the next day. And tell me a little more about that because um, it's a relatively new day the, the Small Business Saturday in, in terms of how long it's been around. Has that really um, gotten traction or are people um, shopping local more because of that? I believe so. American Express started it several years ago um, as a day to shop local, the small shops that have unique gifts. Plus, you're giving to the local owner, that entrepreneur, that business owner that gives back to our community. And then in 2017 session, Representative Doreen Gallegos actually put forth legislation, which was signed and approved by Governor Martinez at the time, mm -hmm. that it is also tax-free day on, on that Saturday after for Small Business Saturday. So you don't have to pay taxes on certain things. They can look it up, uh, the legislation online. But it's real key because that is so important to the small local business on that making those days and that those sales that particular day is, is good and like I said it's it's the unique gifts because those uh, people are able to buy not just quantities of things but very unique gifts and that's a good point and then of course we have the farmers market that occurs every Saturday and so exactly. that'll be part of small business Saturday as well and one interesting thing we partnered with us with there at the farmers market is the kids can program which is our youngsters 6 to 21 uh, that have their own businesses that sell at the farmers market mm -hmm. so we're raising our own entrepreneurs which is very key because small business as you know is the heartbeat of America and Las Cruces is, is no different than any hometown USA because that they're the people uh, as well as the corporate to a certain degree but they're the people that coach our soccer teams that get involved in our schools and give back so that involvement in the community is very key. So we talk about local and shopping local, local involvement. How does internet shopping impact our local business community? Well, it does huge. You know, more and more people are going online, and I have to stop myself sometimes from pushing that online button and shopping there uh, because that's their livelihood of the small business and that entrepreneur. And when I say local, uh, while it can be a locally owned business, there's also the franchise owners that have purchased franchise, that have franchise with, with mm. corporate names, but it's their business, and they hire our employees and our residents the community. So it's all those people who have invested in a business that makes a difference. So it does hurt. I know now we are paying tax online sales to help uh, 
you know, subsidize that loss a little bit. Uh, but millions of dollars are lost, probably billions nationally. I haven't seen the statistics lately on the amount that's lost uh, to those online shopping. Uh, I've noticed even the brick and mortar stores now have a strong online presence. And it's the small guy can't always do that. And so that's why it's so important to spend those dollars locally. And then in turn, you hope that those small business employees are spending their money for the rollover effect, to keep those dollars just rolling constantly over within our community. A dollar you spend locally can roll over in our community five to seven times. Wow. That, that's a huge impact. So, yes, when you start thinking about that, and then, you know, taxes, although Saturday is, tax, you know, Small Business Saturday is tax-free to a certain degree, but when you shop local, those taxes help develop a great quality of life or continuation of our quality of life for the city of Las Cruces. So in what ways does the Chamber of Commerce, which you've been the head of how long now? Have Almost four years, four 30 years. years in the industry. So what, what kinds of things are you all doing to try to stimulate the local economy? So... In addition to I, our role, yes, local. our role is to help that business either get started or expand and provide educational tools, partner with West, the city, uh, SBDC, uh, Arrowhead, uh, for the, some of the high tech things that are going on too. Because we have, we have a wonderful gamut of businesses within Las Cruces and Doniana County in our region, really, from everything that you can be a server at a restaurant or you can be in, in a rocket science or maybe even an astronaut. So we offer everything in the education. So we are working very diligently and that's why I'm proud of my appointment to the Workforce Board at all, is that we can be that conduit to not only help a business stay in business, but to provide them opportunity to have employees, you know, when they get big, when they start hiring uh, employees, because basically this starts, often starts out with just a mom and dad, mom and pop, as we call the small, but eventually they want to grow. And so we provide those tools. We provide networking opportunities, educational tools. We advocate for them on issues that impact them at city, county, federal, and state levels that make it, we want, I hate the, I hate the term business friendly, but we always use that term, but an environment where business can, can grow and prosper, but also to give back then to the community by giving to those most vulnerable or to our nonprofits. Okay, terrific. And so the Chamber is also involved in professional development. We are. Yeah, in, in a big way. So tell us a little bit about Leadership Las Cruces. So Leadership Las Cruces, I actually just left their morning class and uh, I give a leadership tidbits every month at them. It's a 10 month class and we educate and train and hopefully uh, educate them mostly, I think, on the community, what our community has to offer. Today is Agriculture Day. They went to military. They went to Whistler last month. But also along the way, not only do professional development and education, but personal development. We want to make sure that as they mature within their places of employment or in their own personal life, that we're creating the greatest opportunity for leadership development. And, and that also goes, you touched on this a, a little earlier, junior leadership yes. development, how you're trying to yes. develop uh, local entrepreneurs from an early age. So tell us about So our junior, junior leadership is for juniors in high school at any of the high schools, both private and public within the Doniana County area. We have 37 of them this year, a big class. And it's exciting to see them do, two of our junior leadership graduates are now working for Virgin Galactic. And we, I kind of follow them now and, and I saw one the other day that was uh, working uh, at a restaurant here in town and she called me out and I'm proud of them but yes educating them not only in the entrepreneur but educating them on they can get a higher education certification mm -hmm. program through our higher education institutions here but also there's jobs out there and that we can keep our kids here and they can raise their families here and that's that's I think the, the chamber really serves as the heart of the community that we facilitate business, but also we also facilitate training of their employees and in, in the quality of life working diligently with the governments uh, that I mentioned before in, in making them, the those juniors decide to stay local. Even if, let's just say by chance they go to college, I hope they come back here and get jobs here. See, and that's a real important <coughs> point and I'm glad you brought that up about trying to keep them here because we always hear about the brain drain of so many people leaving our community and it's nice that you're trying to develop this core of individuals who mm -hmm. hopefully will stay here and share their experiences and help others grow as well. You know, we often hear about the brain drain, but I, I've been talking to my board about, let's talk about the brain 
that's here, that there are jobs here and that there are alumni from both uh, DACC and NMSU that have got good quality jobs. And now their children are in our public school system and they're being educated. But there are jobs here, perhaps not at the high quality or the salaries that we always desire, but there are job possibilities. There's job training here. And I just see the sky's the limit with the opportunities that we have within our region. Great, and then so one other component to all of this is the Las Cruces Young Professionals. Uh, tell us some about that. Please. So the Young Professionals is mostly uh, young professionals, you know, that we talk about the millennials, but having an opportunity for them to grow together, to network together, and really part of my selfishness is that they can tell each other about jobs, is they can tell each other about new career paths and give them opportunity. The other thing we do is we bring in CEOs uh, once a month, so the CEO could share their experience, not so much on their business, but on their whole life and how, you know, it's important to have mentors. It's important to be engaged with your, your, who you're leading. And a key component of that is the networking piece. And so that's the young professionals. And they meet uh, monthly. They actually have three different programs. They do what they call caffeinated conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's over coffee uh, on a Tuesday morning, I believe. Uh, they move the schedule around sometimes on me, but they bring in someone um, that's, oh, say a realtor that talks about the real estate market. Uh, and then we'd have a uh, think tank lunch where we talk about different topics that are impacting them. Uh, many of them are parents, so it could be a school issue or how to navigate uh, changing career paths. And then, of course, in the evenings, then we have uh, the, the CEO uh, comes and talks to them. Okay, great. And and earlier you, you talked about advocacy and you're huge advocates when it comes to the legislative session in Santa Fe every year. Mm -hmm. You always have a big presence up there. And one of the things that the chamber sponsors is um, Las Cruces Day in Santa Fe, which is hugely uh, popular. Tell us what some of the things that you do in Santa Fe during the session to try to get dollars our way and mm -hmm. bring Southern New Mexico up to the forefront of the lawmakers. Well, our conquistadors, as you know, is our goodwill ambassadors, and they work very diligently through the year and sponsor. They're the main sponsor arm of the chamber for Las Cruces Day in Santa Fe. We have many business partners, including the city and Diana mm -hmm. County, uh, Memorial, Mountain View, Comcast, Emerging Galactic, or some of our key ones, along with U.S. Bank. And they, we have three days of activities, including exposure to our legislative uh, arm, our representatives and senators that are up there, as well as whatever our priorities are for the year. Uh, but, but it goes beyond those three days. I'm up there probably about 90% of the session working diligently to ensure that they don't forget us south of I-40. Having lived north of I-40, I understand that concept. And it's very important that our legislators get to know us. They know what our, our priorities are and, and really advocate for strong uh, issues, strong legislation that will impact businesses in a positive way, but our community as a whole in a positive way. Sometimes, as you know, the 30-day session is primarily money. 60-day mm -hmm. uh, is wide open. And it's going to be interesting, this 30-day session, because there's a lot of money, quote-unquote, on the table. <clears throat> and so I think it's going to be, I'll probably be up there quite a bit for that, uh, but advocating. But, you know, I just encourage people who are watching this, you know, it's not just about the session. It's about taking advantage of having coffee with your senator or legislator. And I know we have, we just finished a municipal election. We have a big election coming up in fall of 2020. Get to know the candidates and your legislators legislators now currently talk to them. They're accessible. When I go nationwide to my counterparts, they're amazed about how accessible our elected officials are at every level. And they that we are very proud in New Mexico that that is, a, I think, an advantage we have is that we can pick up the phone and contact one of our legislators. And I take advantage of that all the time. But that's what we do in the advocacy while the business person is busy trying to keep money in the door to keep the lights on, I'm out there fighting for them at every level, whether it be an issue with the city or state, county, whatever, but also to, to tell the city, county, state, whatever they're doing, you're doing this really good. How can I help you make this better? It's really good, but let's improve it. How can we work together? Partnerships, working together, collaborations, I think is the key for a good quality, and I think Las Cruces does it good. 
And, and uh, again, a good point you raised are the lawmakers do want to hear from their they constituents. Do. They do. And a lot of times people feel that they're not approachable, that our elected officials or they don't listen, but that's simply not the case. That is uh, simply not the case. And during any session, you know, I always say I'm up there, but I'm also paid by the chamber to advocate, which I understand and I take that responsibility. But take the time to email or make a phone call. They keep tallies of that, particularly if there's a strong issue that mm -hmm. we're working on, they take tallies on that and they, they have a yes or no uh, in, in maybes or however you want, but take advantage. But, but I, I can't reiterate enough how if you have an issue, those grassroots efforts beforehand, get a group together and go meet with a, a legislator and even do that on a city level. Call your council person and, and let them know what's going on in your neighborhood or how something is impacting their business. They want to hear from them. I mean, it's one thing to hear from me in the chamber. And like I said, I take that very seriously. But that's another thing when a business person takes the time to make a phone call to anyone, even your federal delegation. Uh, Congresswoman Tori Small, we've hosted several coffees at the chamber. And I know she's been throughout the district she wants to hear too everyone wants to hear it's just we have to make it a priority to have our voices heard and when you talk about <laughs> collaboration uh, a very good one is the Doniana County Legislative yes. uh, Coalition and and that's the the chamber the city the county NMSU Spaceport America all these right. organizations coming together and you're very the active schools in that and the too. bridge of yeah. bridge of southern New Mexico because it's oftentimes we need to be centered together. We need to go together on an issue uh, and not compete against each other. So it's important that our uh, dollars, our e efforts that we're going to, they complement each other and not compete because that we cannot get anything past the legislature by with our 15 delegation. We have to make the connections with the those around the area and that's sometimes it's lost in the system but we have 15 votes of, of 117 total. And so that makes a difference. And then you advocate for the governor's chief of staff or their legislative person. So it's a all hands on deck program mm -hmm. when you really, so that, that coalition is very important, number one, for each of us to know, for the city to know what the county is going in for, for the schools to understand how the city's request is impacting what the school says in NMSU. So it's at that ed education and information piece. And oftentimes we do put a booklet, thanks to the city, together every year for them. But at the other hand, concentrate on one or two items that we know are critical to the whole region. And that way we we know and it's important for me as advocate up there so much of the time to know all the pieces to know how one fits in with the other so if and, and you've done a great job explaining what the chamber does how it advocates and how it tries to grow business if uh, businesses that aren't yet part of the chamber how do they go about joining well they can they can call us at 575-524-1968 or drop by our office in the beautiful our restored mm -hmm. Armijo uh, house which I think is so ironic that we're living in a house that's over 150 years old right. and yet we've uh, Recording spaceport and Virgin Galactic and airplanes and spaces and all this. So we, we were there at the beginning. Nestor Armijo was a business person. And mm -hmm. So I'm very honored to them. But they could come by the office. It's an investment. It's an investment in the community. It's an investment, yes, in our organization. But it's an investment in what we're doing out there in the community. And we've got a staff of four and we're everywhere in town. And I'm very proud of that. Well, Debbie, you're doing an excellent job with the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm glad the uh, the governor and the folks up north are recognizing that. Thank you that. very so much. Thank you for everything you do, and um, congratulations again thank on, you your, very much. on your awards, and it's well-deserved. Thank you very much. Okay, and thank you for joining Thanks. us. Thanks.